Welcome to the Grand Blank United Methodist Church service for June 28th, 2020, with guest speaker, Reverend Stephen Buck. God who stretched the spangled heavens in Church. This is Brian West. I'm here to share with you a little bit more about myself if we get closer to that July 1st start date. This is the last Sunday before July 1st when I become uh, the pastor here at Grand Blank United Methodist Church fully and uh, we're already moved into the parsonage and grateful for all the work that's been done here. But this morning, just to share with you a little bit more about myself in a fun way, I wanted to play a game that we used to play at camp a lot, uh, and maybe they still do at camp, and it's called Two Truths and a Lie. And the way the game works is like this. I'll tell you three things about myself. Two of them are going to be true. One is going to be a fib. Now, your job is to figure out which one is the fib. So here we go. Option one is this. When I was in seminary, I played a game of baseball against a bunch of Major League Baseball Hall of Famers. Option two. I decided a while ago not to be on Facebook anymore just because I wanted a little more privacy. Option three. I've flown a plane before. All right, do you think you have it figured out which one is the fib? Well, let me go through them one by one. The first option is that I played a game against Hall of Fame baseball players. That's actually true. In 2012, a friend of mine won a contest through Pepsi Max, if you remember Pepsi Max. 
And that allowed us to play in this big Field of Dreams baseball game in Columbus, Ohio against Major League Baseball Hall of Famers. It was an incredible experience. And I'd love to tell you more about it sometime if you're a baseball fan. The second is that I have gotten off of Facebook. Well, that's actually the fib. I'm still on Facebook and actively on there. My own policy is that I don't friend anyone who doesn't first ask to be friended. So you'll never get a friend request from me. I just wait for you to request from me. Uh, but once you do, I'm happy to accept your friend request and happy to share with you uh, the things that I put out. I like to put out things for church, personal things uh, that you may be interested in learning about, pictures from anywhere and everything. Um, and I would love to learn more about what you're doing uh, through your Facebook page, uh, but certainly getting to know you more personally uh, by meeting you face-to-face, uh, -face, one day at least. The, the third option was that I've flown a plane. Well, that's true. Thankfully, it wasn't your trip to Vegas or to Disney World. It was a small two-seater plane that my cousin was flying. He's a pilot and, and took me up into the, to the air one time and we flew around for a while and he let me take controls for the landing. We made it. But that was probably the last time I'll fly, at least for a while. Well, those are just three things about myself. Well, two things about myself. Uh, but I'm uh, looking forward to sharing more with you about who I am, uh, what matters to me, uh, but also learning more about what matters to you and who you are and uh, what makes you excited about ministry. So we'll see you around. Uh, see you soon as we get draw closer to July 1st. And thank you again for all the, the warm welcomes that we've already received. Until we see you, take care. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Steve Buck, a retired United Methodist pastor, and I am honored to be with you on this Sunday morning to have the opportunity to share God's word. Before I get into the sermon, I have a couple of thoughts I want to share with you. First of all, I want to thank you as a congregation for the way you have welcomed Susan and me into the life of your church. Uh, it's been a big step for me because I've usually been on the pulpit side, on this side of the pulpit, and sitting in the back seat of the pews was, is uh, something I have enjoyed tremendously. One of the things that uh, attracted Susan and I to be a part of this uh, church is the fact that I had a sense that you valued worship. I appreciated what Dr. J had to say and how he opened scripture up and his keen intellect and deep faith, but it's much more than that. It's more than just the one that does the preaching. I sense that you valued music, that you valued liturgy, and that you had a good time being together, and that meant a lot to me. A second thought I have is Brian West, our new pastor, and my path crossed a number of years ago. I was chairing a committee. Brian was on the committee as a registrar and part of the executive committee 
And I, it did not take long to greatly appreciate Brian, his intellect, his deep faith, his skills. He is going to be, I believe, a great match for us here at Grand Blanc United Methodist Church. And I am excited to have him be my first real pastor since my dad. We look in the beginning of God's Word, and it opens with not an argument for who God is, but it begins with the words, in the beginning. And then we look in John's Gospel, as John, that philosopher, disciple, follower of Jesus the Christ, and he begins with mirroring those words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that was the introduction to who Jesus Christ is. Beginnings are important, aren't they? I will never forget a spring evening in 1970 at 38th Street Park, just off of the college campus in Marion, Indiana, when I had a date with a beautiful young lady since we're still together, I guess you've got to say that something good happened in that beginning. Well, it may have been that she just overlooked things, but it was a launching pad to a relationship that has now lasted 50 years, 48 of them being married and looking forward to a future. One of the advantages of being a pastor is you get to hear the stories of people's lives of faith especially the stories of the beginnings. I have had some stories that just ripped at my heart, some that I wanted to stand up and say, ah, oh, man, and some that were perhaps a little boring. But I remember one gentleman coming in my office and saying, I think you need to know a little about me. I had no time for church. I had no time for God. And I was in the Korean War. And I was in a foxhole, and there were machine gun bullets going over my head and hitting all around me. And I said to God, if you will get me out of this, I will follow you. And he kept that up, a foxhole conversion. I remember a colleague of mine sharing the story of how he came to a vital faith. He said, I was a nominal, somewhat Christian at best, was in New York City with some friends, and there was a Billy Graham crusade. And we said, let's go and see what this is all about. And he went as a cynic, as a, one ready to critique what was going on. And he said, something happened there. And I went away with a new understanding of the reality of God's love and forgiveness, and it led me to being a pastor. Beginnings, boy, they can be important. We could write a whole lot of stories about beginnings that did not go that well, for there are some of those. But beginnings at their best are a launching pad for relationships that grow and grow and grow. There can be pitfalls to beginnings. When I was appointed to the pastor of Marquette First United Methodist Church, I was in my 30s. I was so excited to go to that church. It was a church that had a lot of university people in it, people from the medical center there, and that unique group of people that were called the townies. They were people from Marquette who put up with people like me who came from below the bridge. It was an exciting church, one of faith and vitality and diversity. I was, I was going to make the best impression possible. Three months earlier, we had, Susan and I had been up to meet the staff parish committee. And what I was gonna do in making this good impression was to memorize the names of those nine people on staff parish. And I was going to get them right. And I was gonna at least have some people that I could call by their name. My Sunday morning habit when I was pastoring was always to get to the church early in the morning. And some hour, hour and a half before the service, I saw someone coming to the door from my office, the door to the church, and I looked. And I thought, he, he was part of Staff Parish. Who is it? Oh, it's, 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 oh, it's Mr. Clark. It's Don Clark. 
He came in the door, walked past my office. I opened the door as he was walking away. And I said, Don, Don Clark. And he turned around, turned around with a quizzical look on his face and said, Steve, you got half of it right. It's Mike Clark. Now, what I had done was transpose the names because I had a Don Clark in a previous church. Did that destroy my relationship with Mike? No, he was a great leader in the church and in the community. But what it did do was give, he took permission to tell that story to anyone that would listen. So anytime I was feeling like I had things together, he let me know. But it was because of his grace that that was not a stumbling block to our relationship. Beginnings. There's another problem with beginnings. Sometimes beginnings, especially in the life of faith, can be an anchor. This doesn't mean they're not powerful. Some of the most dramatic stories of faith can also become an anchor. And what I mean by that is a person can so often look to the past and the power of that experience of God's grace in their life that they don't move very far beyond it. And when their answer to every question is how they felt God's grace at that time, it, it is keeping them from being launched as far as they could in their life of faith. What do we do with beginnings? The religions of the time when the Old Testament was written and up through part of the times of the New Testament had a very significant difference between Christianity and the Jewish understanding of faith. Most of those religions were much like getting on a merry-go-round. You would get on and you would go round and round and experience the same things, and that was how they viewed life. The good thing about a merry-go-round is if you miss it, you can wait one rotation or a thousand rotations and get on. And when you get off, you're going to be pretty close to where you were before. Christianity and the Jewish understanding of faith is very different. It's more like you get on a train and you get on point A and you go to point B. And if I miss getting on the train at the time that was scheduled and instead wait another hour, well, it's going to get me to the same place. I'm not going to have all of the same experiences. I'm going to have a different person sitting next to me on the train. I'm going to see the sunlight in a little different way. It's not exactly the same. What that tells us is that beginnings, beginnings are so important. Each of those moments are important. I have a tendency to look at my beginning in faith and refer to an experience I had as a freshman in college. I came from a Christian family. My dad is a pastor and I someplace along the line came to the conclusion that everything that was wrong in my life was God's fault. And I was going to go away to college and if not be a rebel, at least not be so close to my folks that I would, well, I think you get the picture of where I was. I went to a small Christian college in Indiana. In October, on a Saturday morning, we're, there was a pickup basketball game in the old dilapidated gym. Things got a little bit out of control, as they sometimes do, and Larry, a varsity basketball player, stepped in as the peacemaker. And he turned to me and he says, Buck, what is your problem? And I said, it's none of your business. And he got a smile smirk on his face, and he said, you're just mad at God. And it was like someone had gotten into the chip in my head and read my whole life's history, and I, well, that was the beginning. Hours later, some prayers and discussion and life, life was beginning. Beginnings, they are important. But if they're as far as we go in this walk with God, there is a problem. Let's go back to Scripture. Genesis starts with in the beginning, and John's gospel says also, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, it doesn't end with that. 
the next word is, in the beginning was God. I believe that is a foundational truth for us, no matter where we are on our walk with God. To acknowledge that God is and was and will be with us. For what happened after that beginning? God created. God created out of nothing. God created a universe. God created humanity. God created you and I. And in that creation, our life of beginning has had times of ups when God was there smiling with us. And we had times of downs, sometimes of our own doing, sometimes of tragedy, all times when God wrapped arms around us or when God offered forgiveness. In the beginning, God. A second thought of that briefly. Those first words of Genesis tell us much about the character of God. In the beginning, God created. God has not stopped creating. And when we look at creation, we see not only a beautiful poem of how things have come together, but we see how God relates to us. Loving, caring, understanding, reaching out to us with grace and peace. In the beginning, God. We are in the midst of a lot of beginnings. Who would have thought three or four months ago that we would be wearing masks when we went into a building, that we would have to worship in ways that we were not used to worshiping before, that God would have to work miracles through technology for us to experience worship. A new beginning, a new way to worship, a new way to relate to each other, but a way that God is with us through all of this. And then, a beginning, welcoming a new pastor, welcoming the pastor and family into our life as leaders and participants in the life of the church. My prayer and hope for us, that as we are in beginnings, whether it is a new pastor, whether it is a church that launches a new program, whether it is relationships that are forming and growing, that we will acknowledge and experience God's creating power in our midst. And that we will not only be held in the arms of God, but we will be launched from those initial and powerful experiences of faith into the reality of relationships where the world can be transformed. To God be the glory. Amen.
Let us pray. It has been good to worship today, eternal God. We have felt your presence in numerous ways. But as any time we worship, this is a beginning of our stepping out into a new day and a new life. We do not go in our own strength, but we begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching our service. Please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Comments and thumbs up are much appreciated, and if you have not checked out our church website, please take a look at the description for this video for links on how you can support our ministry.